Good morning. It's Monday, which this is going to be my official start to this week's vlog because Sunday I didn't do very much. I'm going to get my makeup done. I do have a full day of work like I always do, uh, but the plans for this week, I am going to finish up the last house on Needless Street because I did not finish it like I said I was going to. And then I think I'm going to follow up with The Diary of a Void. This is a book, it's a Japanese translated work that is about a woman who is working in an office job who is tired of being kind of treated like a gopher and not respected and expected to do all of these different like menial tasks when that's not the point of the job. And then she decides to tell everyone that she's pregnant because the way that the patriarchal culture works there means that she doesn't really have to do much, but she's able to keep her job. But the whole twist, I guess not really a twist, but the whole conceit of this story is that she's not pregnant. I really enjoyed the Japanese translated works that I've read before. I feel that the ones that come over to the U.S. have a tendency to be critiques, not just of Japanese culture, but of culture in general. And I'm interested to see how this one goes. I also want to actually get to reading Disfigured. I'm going to get ready for work and I will check in with you later. I was hoping that after I went to one of my favorite haunts to read for a little bit, I would have finished The Last House on Needless Street. I did not. I'm really close, so I'll definitely have it done by tomorrow. We hit a point in the book where it's doing something, what so the plot is picking up. And it's doing something that happens sometimes with books about mental health or that have mental health as a plot point mental health disorders I should say that I don't always like and the way that the plot is starting to advance I'm starting to understand like what's going on it's being done pretty okay I have heard that this like one of the blurb says that this book keeps you guessing until the very last page where you think you know everything that's going on, but you don't. I'm curious how that's going to pan out, but I am enjoying the writing and the tension building. I'm really hoping that it carries through and that I'm wrong about things and the way that this is going to go. I really don't think I am, but I'm going to let Catriona Ward hopefully surprise me. It, it's been a few days. I have not been feeling well. I actually, I actually feel terrible right now. I think I look terrible, but I did get a ring light, so I've kind of been messing with that and the settings, so that's kind of exciting. This, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what settings or how I want all of it to work, but I am slowly but surely kind of making a better setup for myself here. So that's cool, uh, even though I don't feel good. Uh, I haven't read in the last couple of days. I haven't checked in. I did finish The Last House on Needless Street. And while the tension in the book was really well done, which means that I probably will give this author another try in the future, maybe thrillers aren't for me. I feel like I've said this before. Some of it is because I find them very predictable. And no, I didn't guess every twist in this. This is also a book that you can't really talk about deeply or in any kind of real depth without spoiling it. So I think I will do a dedicated review to it. Oh, I say that. We'll see if I do. I might. Hello. Um, yeah, I predicted something really early on. It is, I think it's meant to be picked up on pretty early on, but I'm kind of bored with this being used in thrillers. I'm kind of bored with these types of things being used to create an unreliable narrator. And while I respect that this specific cliche in thrillers was done, kind of turned on its head a little bit, it wasn't actually interesting to me. 
at the end of the day. The pacing was good, the writing styles were good, styles, the character voices I did enjoy, I liked the way that Ward writes, but at the end of the day I'm more irritated by the book than anything. So I don't know if this is because I'm choosing the wrong thrillers or thrillers are just not the genre for me. They're just a, they, they kind of line up too much with like true crime or crime stories. And in my day job, I deal with violent crimes and navigating those systems all day. So maybe that's just not something I want to experience in my reading, unless it's nonfiction, because it's one of those things where if you're too close to the, uh, <laughs> if you're too close to the material, the subject, source material, I don't know what I'm trying to say, I do not feel good today. Um, but if you're too close to that, it's hard to suspend disbelief. You kind of already know how a lot of things that are supposed to happen XYZ way or like the critiques that have been done. There aren't a ton of new ones in my experience. This is stuff I do all day, every day in the real world. So that's probably why they're not for me. I am disappointed. It, I think it ended up being a two star read because her writing's really good. But there's just a number of things about this book in particular and the way that unreliable unreliable narrators in thrillers specifically are being used. I just, it isn't for me. So next up on my reading list is Diary of a Void. I have talked about this already. I, it's a pretty short book, shouldn't take me too long. I also, depending on my mood today, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to get back into reading Disfigured by Amanda LeDuc, which seems a bit hypocritical because another aspect of my work is doing a lot of like disability activism and advocacy and this is about disability and making space. It's a non-fiction, it's written as a critique of, a, of societal, it's not an overarching narrative trying to be shocking or surprising, so I think that's why I'm more drawn to non-fiction as it relates to things that I deal with in my 40-hour full-time work. There is another option and I don't know if I'm going to do that yet because because I got get your tail out of my face <laughs> because I got book mail I used to get book of the month and I enjoyed that for a while I would consider doing it again but I'm wanting to do more support for indie bookstores small bookstores and one of my dislikes of the books I was getting from book of the month is they are all the same size and if they have if the book itself uh, in its regular publication comes with like an embossed cover or end pages that does not exist in the book of the month edition which makes sense because that's probably why they're able to be the price that they are but when I'm gonna own a book as opposed to just get it from the library I think I want that official cover even if it's gonna cost me more because I'm paying for the art I'm paying for the look of it too anyway I don't know what this book is because it is a secret subscription uh, if you are a member of the subscription box, don't watch this video if you haven't gotten yours yet. I'm bad at opening things. So it comes, it's just a single book um, from a local-ish store. It always comes with, it's called the dog pack. It always comes with a bookmark um, that just is about the specific book subscription that I'm getting. And a lovely little notebook about it. So I don't want to read it because it's going to spoil what the book is for me. And then we get a little wrapping paper. So I'm going to open this. What did we get? The Light Pirate. Oh, it's a Good Morning America. Like it has this big sticker on it. It's a bummer when you get a book subscription because you don't know what kind of cover you're getting. Just said part of the reason I wanted to do this was to get the better covers. Oh well. Um, it is also a signed copy. So I get this from Dog-Eared Books, which is a store in central Iowa. And they do ship across the country if it's something you're interested in. And the book subscription, you get a new hardcover that's chosen by the staff and it's a signed hardcover. Um, this is The Light Pirate by Lily Brooks Dalton, which I have never heard of before. I have never heard of the author or, and I wasn't aware of this specific book. Yep, it's signed. That's cool. I like that. It says here, it's a story of survival and resilience spanning one woman's lifetime as she navigates the uncertainty, 
brutality, and arresting beauty of a rapidly changing world. Oh, it's in Florida. And it looks like it talks about climate change. So I probably won't read this one tonight, but I am excited to get into it. Uh, the Diary of a Void is a library book that I have to get back sooner rather than later too, and since it's short and this one's a little bigger, I think I start with this one. again it's been a few days I am not even trying to keep this up to be regularly weekly I will probably do this differently in the future but why I'm popping in real quick is to finish this up and say I did finish Diary of a Void and I like a lot of books I've been reading lately am not sure how I feel about it I find Japanese translated literature uh, really interesting one of my favorite books of 2020 was The Memory Police, and I know that the magical realism or ambiguity in a lot of Japanese literature that I have read is part of the appeal, but at the same time it's something I feel like I have to really think about and read other people's interpretations of, whether that's cultural differences or just not being um, particularly perceptive to what these writers are trying to portray. It's probably a mix of both of those things. Um, I really did enjoy this when I think about it. It's it's less about pregnancy and gender. Well, there's a lot about gender, but it's a lot about loneliness. And that's something, hello, every time, every time. Uh, that's something I've been thinking about a lot and dealing with a lot myself in a very different culture than parts of Japan but still found a lot relatable in this, even though I'm not someone who's faking a pregnancy, nor am I in a job where I'm the only woman or where I'm expected to do like care tasks that other people aren't. Um, I have been, so I related to that as well. But yeah, I think I just need to start reading more literary criticism to better understand, hi, <laughs> to better understand different techniques in literary fiction. I've been really leaning toward reading literary fiction more so than like fantasy or thrillers, like we said before, because it explores themes that I don't always get right away. And I think that's part of the appeal, but I do need to put in a little bit of time to better understand it and make sure I'm choosing things that I fully enjoy or that I can, I guess, interpret. I don't know. Uh, but that's all I've got for this, this video. I plan on probably doing theme stuff, maybe figuring out what I'm going to do with this channel in the future. I would really like to upload more, but I gotta have a better plan than let's just do weekly vlogs where I talk about books. I, I will see you. <laughs> we will see you in the next video, whatever that happens to be. And thanks for watching. Bye. I promise she's purring. She's not mad. <laughs>